Before I get started, I want you to understand I'm the warm-up act here. So I'm not the, the main, the main. So this is this is the warm-up. I'm the I'm not the featured entertainer. So where this all started at the end of last year's award banquet, I was one of the last people to leave the room. And as I was walking out out by the bar, I happened to see the award elf at the bar. And, and he was, I got to say, a little down, sitting there trying to suck on a beard and, and a beer, and his uh, tassels were really low. And I said, I said, Michael, my old friend, how, what, what's, what's happening? Why are you so, so down? Now, I use the term old as a term of endearment when I ask that question. I want to make sure you understand that. And, and he looked at me and he said, ah, ah, my old friend. And I was a little concerned that he used the term old in terms of my age as opposed to a term. But nevertheless, he said, you know, I, I really enjoy the, the awards banquet that we have each year. We do some really neat things. We recognize people for some of the things that they have done. Uh, and we have a lot of fun with some really cute awards that we kind of make up along the way. Yeah. And um, we, we recognize uh, local officials, and there's some bonding there that goes on between the governmental officials and, and uh, the emergency people and, and ham radio. As a, but to, to tell you the truth, I have a whole series of awards that have sat on the shelf that have gone mostly with one glowing exception. <laughs> More on this later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, you know, I just, I, I, he said, before I leave this earth, before I leave my responsibility as being the chairman of the awards group, by the way, the two things go together, um, I really, really want to see more people <laughs> get some of these awards. And at that moment, the, it was like the, like the sky opened up and there was a shaft of light that came down and a loud booming voice and said, well, why don't you tell them about the awards before the award banquet? Maybe sometime some of them will claim these awards. Well, we thought maybe this was a voice from heaven until I realized that they were actually working you know, on remodeling the, the motel and it was just that they had moved aboard and some of the lights were suddenly not working. And the voice came from a drunk at the end of the bar. <laughs> but nevertheless. So this is how we get to into the awards uh, uh, presentation. So I, you know, there's several reasons why people go after awards. It's, it's nice to have these plaques on the wall. And you can see with the, this picture that they're kind of blurred. Um, that I'm sometimes kind of blurred too. But, you know, so when people come to your shack, they can see all these wonderful awards that you've won. By the way, if you're a real award collector, I suggest that you get some of those electronic picture frames so you can scan the awards because, you know, you're going to spend a lot of money on frames if you, if you don't do that. So, actually, my, my real answer about why I do it is it gives me a chance to, to test my equipment, my station, in combination with my operating skills toward a goal that I would like to accomplish. So, and it's a lot of fun. Now let's talk a little bit about the tools of the trade, or paper chasing. There's general operating awards. Um, there's things like worked all states, worked all continents. Um, and then you have some things that are associated with some special interest groups like AMSAT and Islands on the Air and, and the Internet, 1010 International and other organizations like that. And then there are the, the certificates you can get from special events. A couple of questions. How many of you have QSL cards? Okay that you send to people when you make contacts. OK. How many of you keep a, a paper log of the contacts you make? 
for, for those new people in the room, it used to be an FCC requirement that every time you put your station on the air, you had to log the date, the time, the frequency, and the call sign of anybody that you talked to because the FCC had to be able to come in if they wanted to and look at your log to see if you were on the air at any particular time causing interference. And it also used to be that there was a requirement when you went to renew your license that you'd be able to prove that you'd been active. And I forget the, how many contacts you had to make in a period of time. So all of that has sort of gone away. How many of you use a computerized program to, uh, to keep your contacts? Okay, so let's see. And then of course, how many of you know, know what a mobile QSL card is? Uh, we now we know how many county hunters there are in the room. <laughs> I need three counties. No, I, I thought it was two. So, um, self-addressed stamped envelopes. Uh, anybody? Is there anybody that doesn't know what a green stamp is? I don't know. Okay. Um, when you're when you're sending a physical QSL card to a DX station, and you want to. Uh, and you want to um, get a card back from them. Mm -hmm. The custom is that you, that you send a self-addressed stamped envelope and a couple dollar bills. A dollar uh, bills are green stamps. It's not stamped, it's a self-addressed yeah, it, envelope. Well, yeah, a self-addressed envelope for DX, self-addressed stamped envelope for local, but then you don't include the, the green stamps. Mm -hmm. So yeah, they're little tools of the trade that you gotta, gotta remember. Okay. Yes, it is, or shall we say, it's more for the ones you really want. Yeah. yeah. So, define rare. Yeah. Yep. Uh, the mobile, QSL mobile QSL cards are used in county hunting. So, in county hunting, what happens is, as well as people operating from their fixed stations, there are other people that go out with mobile stations, and they will, they will operate, they will activate a number of counties along the way. So you need one in Minnesota, right, Lake of the Woods. You need, you need one in Georgia, and I forget the name of it. And then what's the third one that you need? It's in Vermont. Okay. So, yes. Yeah, three thousand yeah, seventy-seven counties. What was your question? My uh, my favorite method is to uh, not write the contract down and get out of it, then you have the joy of meeting them again. <laughs> yeah, there is. But, but what I'm going to tell you is, if you're going to do, if you're going to go after awards, you got to be organized with regard to record keeping, and having a, an electronic a log is really helpful. And uh, we'll go into that a little bit more here. So the other thing is that I want to talk about here is Logbook of the World. How many of you are are registered with Logbook of the World? Okay. If you're going to go after the, the ARL awards, and if, now, now if you're going to go after um, the Work All Zone right. award, CQ award, CQ award um, that's really helpful. It, it does a couple things. Uh, basically, you upload your log, and the other people upload their log. The computer system does a match, and that suffices, if you have a match, as being as good as getting a QSL card. You don't have to spend $4, and it's instantaneous compared to, I sent this card off to this guy in Mexico two years ago, and he hasn't sent me a card. So I sent another card back, and he's like, so it's instantaneous. And then you can file for the awards using Logbook of the World as well. Um, so Logbook of the World, if you're going to go after the big awards, uh, is something you really need to do. Uh, and maybe it's something that we ought to just have a separate presentation on at some point in time. If you're going to the county awards, you're going to want to get yourself a copy of the county book. It lists all the counties in, in, in all the states in alphabetical order, and you just write down the, uh, the, uh, the, the date and the, uh, the call sign and that you've received the card, if I recall, after you receive the card. Uh, some, of, some awards require that you physically submit cards. Other awards work more on the honor system, but still reserve the right to inspect. So, I'll get into that a little bit later on. 
So this is how I got started. You can't get this one anymore, by the way. Rag Chewers Club certificate. I got this as K3SZD uh, in Pennsylvania. And later on, I added a few other calls <laughs> of mine. But what, uh, what you had to do to get this is you had to have a QSO with somebody, this is back in the Morse code days, <laughs> that lasted 30 minutes. And then you, you submitted proof, and then the league sent you the Rag Tourers Club. So that's, that was the first piece of paper that, uh, that I ever got. Um, if you are operating on HF, the Work All States Award is probably the first thing that you're going to work on. And that, uh, you know, it, interestingly enough, today with Logbook of the World and FT8, you could actually do this in a weekend if you wanted to. But, yeah, yeah. Yeah when, a, yeah, when a contest is going on, particularly a domestic contest, that you can do that in a weekend. But if you're not using the digital modes and you're trying to do voice or CW, there are some very interesting challenges associated with this. When I got my work doll states, it was during a time, moment of silence here, when 10 meters <laughs> was hopping. Now, 10 meters is a fantastic band. Uh, let's just simply tell you that uh, when 10 meters is active, you can work Japan with 25 watts and a spaghetti noodle. I mean, you don't really need much of an antenna, uh, but it presents some other challenges too, uh, which you'll discover. But nevertheless, so th the problem with trying to get work all states, if you're using primarily 10 meters, is you'll do really fine with stuff like California, Arizona, and all that stuff out about here. But once you get close in, it's really tough. Well, there are a couple of different ways to, to do it. Uh, you know, one of the things you could do is you could find out when the, uh, the emergency net for the state is meeting the time and frequency. And if, you, if you were trying to find Virginia, then you'd go on 3947 and check into that net. Uh, if, if you could hear it, you could work it. And uh, that's, that's, that's one way to do it. And that's the way I picked up my last state my last day at that time was Tennessee. The other two that are fairly challenging in almost all conditions are Vermont and Delaware because there aren't a lot of hams in those two states. There are hams there, but there aren't a lot of hams in Vermont and Delaware. So those two are. Well, you could do that. <laughs> so he's talking about 20, 15, 10. Yeah, mainly 10, right. But if you're trying to do this on 40 meters or, or 80 meters, then yeah, it's, a, it's a challenge. Um, then, of course, once you get your work all states, and by the way, you can see this one has endorsements. So this was like, they worked all of them on 160, and all of them on 80, and all of them on 30, and all of them on 6, and 17, 12, 10. You can see this person got endorsements for specific bands. Then you can go for your five-band work all states. When you hear a, an award is five-band, we're talking about 80, 40, 20, 15, and 10. I was going to say the original ham bands, but then I would be corrected because 15 yeah, 15 wasn't in the original group of ham radio bands. So, um, so you is could go for a, the. Is there a time limit on this? Or no. Okay, no. It's not that no. you have to do it in a year or something. No. Like that. no. Yeah, but no. you had to go to the same call. That's even changed. No, yeah. Uh, but you <laughs> for the all states. Uh, That's there's a limit on the QTH. Yeah. You have How to far within 50, <laughs> 150 miles of the QTH. Yeah, they've they've changed yeah. those those rules over the years. The FCC can move anywhere in the country. Yeah. The FCC, yeah. 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 Now let me let me address some of the guys that have been in the hobby for a long time, specifically the ones. That have had gotten awards under other call signs. It is possible, and also awards off of a off of a uh, paper log as opposed to uh, the. You can have the ARL logbook of the world merge the paper submissions with your logbook of the world submissions, 
and so that would that'll actually increase the, in most cases the number of countries and the, the contacts associated with I have a problem because I've got contacts going back to 1963 under four five different call signs so I haven't really merged all that stuff together I probably should have Okay, another one that doesn't take a lot of work is the Worked All Continents Award. So, um, Asia, Oceania, North America, South America, Europe, Antarctica. Was that right? Oceania. Yeah, Oceania. So. Yeah, well, that, and let me go back to, to the, on, to big, oh, we didn't get to that one. Hold on, wait a second. Yes, maybe we did. We talked about, when you talk about countries, by the way, with regard to DXCC, um, the numbers or the rules are a little different about what's a country. So if, if you're doing work all states, you've got to work all 50 of the states, right? But, it, but if you work all 50 of the states, that's three countries for DXCC because Alaska and Hawaii count as separate countries because they are more than 50 miles away from the mainland in the United States. If you are VHF, UHF oriented, you'll want to go after the BUCC, the Century Club associated with the grid squares. So how many of you know what grid square <coughs> your station is located in? If you're in Charlottesville, it's most likely FM08. So, and um, here's one. Do we have any A1 operators in the in the room? <laughs> this this award you have to be nominated by someone who is an A1 operator. It has to do with the quality of the signal and the quality of your conduct on the air, not just, not just in terms of uh, the politeness, whatever, but also with regard to the, your use of the English language. What can I say? I know one person who is a, an A1 operator, and that's W2HD. He is an A1 <coughs> operator. Uh, but yeah, and, you know, and, and what happens is you have to be nominated by someone who's an A1 operator, and then your nomina nomination has to be seconded by another member of the A1 Operators Club. And if you want to see who's been nominated and waiting for a second, it's actually out there on the ARR website. Just look for the a A1 Operators nominees list. Okay, so I did bounce ahead a little bit. Uh, this is the, uh, when you get into DX, this is where, where the fun begins. Work 100 countries, get your DXCC. Um, Total number of countries now is about 300 and, yeah. And it does, it, 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 cha it changes over the years. There's some countries that, that were there that are no longer there. And there's some new countries that are there now. Uh, yeah, so I mean, if you've got, if you've got a, uh, a QSL card from uh, East Germany, that no longer counts as, as separate from Germany. That's just Germany, you know, all the rest of that. So those change over the years. And there's a little politics involved in some of that too. But the Spratly Islands, if you, if you go out, to, which is now not what it used to be, but basically it, it's, it's like a rock. And these people have, have these two rocks are close together. There's a chair on, on one rock and, a, and a, like a booth with the radio equipment on the other rock, and that's it. It's, it's territory that China has disputed over who it belongs to when they're building air bases out, or naval bases out there. I wish I could say that this is my DXCC certificate, <laughs> but I can't. So, yeah, there, you get endorsements as you as you climb, climb in terms of the number of countries worked. Um, yeah, I'm I'm I know that Rob Capon has probably got all of these. That's W3DX. Um, it, I heard NCUS was higher. <laughs> Who'd you hear that from? <laughs> uh, and there are other uh, awards or certificates that you can get from the league. 
uh, code proficiency, and I heard that mentioned here earlier this evening. Uh, an Elmer Award, if somebody's been really helpful Elmering you, you can get an Elmer certificate and give it to them. A First Contact Award, uh, and you can also get DXCC for QRP. This is interesting. This is the CQ Work All Zones. These are the zones that apply for CQ. Um, first time I saw this map, I'm going, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm looking for this one. Yes, yes. So, yes. Um, and that's what the Work Goal Zone Certificate looks like. Uh, and there is support for this on the Logbook of the World now. They just recently did an agreement for that. This is the Work Goal Counties Award. You can get the first one of these at 500 counties, and it goes up from there until you get all the way to the 3,077. And uh, there's a Work Doll Prefixes Award that's available. So think of the prefixes we have in this room, K4, N4, K2, and just it's all, it just gives us through all that. Yes. One of my favorite ones over the years is the WPX contest. Yeah. yeah. Because everybody needs to work everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Just yeah. Yeah. Twenty-four yeah. hours a day. That's true. Because it's even those of us who are the casual contesters that are kind of going, well, I've got that country, but oh, I don't have this one, you know. So, yeah. but this one you got to get all of them. You. So that's a good one. Okay, I mentioned ten meters yesterday, or earlier today. Um, so when 10 meters comes back and you get on the air and you get excited about talking to people on 10 meters, probably within the first five contacts, somebody's going to say to you, what's your 1010? And you're going to sit there and say, what? <laughs> what he's referring to is your 1010 number. Mine is 46142. The way you get a 1010 number is that you work 10 people who have 1010 numbers, and then you submit an application to 1010 International, and then they will give you a certificate with your own unique 1010 number. Mm -hmm. And then you'll have one that you can give out. And there is a whole slew of certificates and awards available to the various subgroups that are part of the 1010 organization, although uh, it's just, uh, just kind of amazing. But anyway, that if you if you if you haven't been on ten meters, um, just wait till it gets back. The ten ten group, the real purpose was to encourage people to use ten meters all the time, even at the worst of the sunspots. Yep, it's true. Even if there's nobody out there to talk to. <laughs> That's true. You'd be surprised sometimes. I'm always surprised when the ten meter contest comes around and you go down to ten meters and there are people there. You know. Where were these people last week? You know, like, what's going on? So, and then we talked about special event stations. I mean, you've seen this one. We did a special event station on the 250th anniversary of Thomas Jefferson's birth. Do you remember this one? <laughs> we were set up over at K-Tech. KM4DU, who is that guy? Never mind, don't mind. So, so we, and we had AA4TJ as the call sign. That was the lactose. So, so this was uh, 83. Wow. 93, 93, sorry. What can I say? Once you get past 70, you know, the brain goes to, <clears throat> never mind. <laughs> there you go. Sounds good. So, uh, yeah, there's a special events thing. So there's just, there's just loads of, uh, of awards that are out there, organizations that, that provide awards. Uh, CQ Magazine fairly regularly has uh, a column that talks about some of the awards that are out there. They talk about more of the awards than, than QST does. So if you get to pick up a copy of CQ, you might find some more about what's going on. Um, is that Slovakia? I'm just curious, is that Slovakia? Yeah. One-time thing, or is that something? I don't know that that's a one-time thing. I think it was. Uh, it was like a. That's what they have them all the time. Yeah, yeah. 
stuff like that. So, anyway. <laughs> Anybody can get the awards that I've shown you. But now I have the honor of introducing my partner in crime, the main act, the, the man who makes the world up to me, J.A. Ford, J.J.D. Okay, operating awards from the Albemarle Amateur Radio Club and you just saw some gorgeous slides, and mine aren't. Of course, there is nothing worse than having a speaker just read his or her slides. Actually, there is something worse. Uh, there is one that's worse. There's another one that's worse. OK, so why do we do this? We'd like to encourage easy operating achievements for newer and even more experienced hands. Uh, we'd like to have stuff to recognize at our prestigious awards dinner, which is always accompanied by thunderous applause, and we'd like to have some fun. So here are the rules, and um, even though he promised to do it, he's just sitting there like a lump, but my lovely assistant will now distribute. <laughs> will now delegate. <laughs> Take one and pass them. And what, what we're handing out is a list of all the awards. So the point is, you submit log sheets to get our awards. And all contacts, no matter how old they are, no matter how old you are, we're uh, happy to have them. Contest, uh, contacts may be made during contests. Any band, frequency, mode, language, even digital, um, not Twitter. Uh, what we need to see is a, a sheet of paper with, well, you can get the log sheets for, on the ARRO website, on the AARC website. Date, time, location, frequency, and call sign. This is all on the honor system. We don't need no damn cards. We don't need no LOTW. And the logs may be submitted in any format. The ones that I've seen, which is very few, were in legible handwriting. First award, welcome to the AARC. Work any five, count them, five. AARC members in any mode. A work a station as an individual, not just as a net check-in. Work lots, worked a few states. HF contacts, oh, by the way, Pete designed a lot of these. These will probably sound familiar to you. Yeah, and there's a few which is, well, one or two HF, well, I, you know, I got a lot of them from you when I was young and innocent. Uh, HF contacts with five of the 50 United States made from one's home station or mobile. Worked lots of states for establishing two-way contact with 15 of the 50 United States from one's home station or mobile. Worked nearby states. And that has the challenges that Bob talked about for establishing two-way radio contact with one ham in each of the states bordering on Virginia, which is on that list in case your ge geography is as On the Virginia phone net. And if you talk to DC and live to tell the tale, there's a special endorsement. <laughs> Big Ten for establishing two-way radio contact with one station in each of the United States call areas. Okay, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. I'm missing nine. You know, perfection is overrated. Uh, and there are some sort of endorsements for Alaska and Hawaii. When I got my WAS, there was a friend of mine with a 900-watt, uh, into a 3,000 foot long tower who called the guy in Alaska and said, talk to my friend. Uh, paper Chaser for establishing two-way radio contact with 20, count them, 20 special event stations. <laughs> Worked all border states, two-way radio contact with stations in US border in Canada, Mexico, the Atlantic and the Pacific Oceans and the Gulf of Mexico and a handy list is provided. The All-American Award for establishing two-way radio contact with one U.S. station outside Virginia and with one station in each of Canada, Mexico, Central America, and South America. Worked all suffixes award for 
working a, at least one station with a suffix beginning with each letter of the alphabet. Okay, that's A, B, C, D, E, blah, 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 blah. Worked my call, which is for establishing, this is a challenging one, two-way radio contact with a station whose call suffix is the same as your own. So for me, it would be J, J, D. I, there must be another one out there somewhere. And again, you, I beg your pardon? I've done it. I don't have a long report. Okay. Well, there you go. Excellent. The Central Virginia Repeater Century Award for establishing two-way radio contact with 50 FM stations and thereby obtaining 100 points, one contact for each call sign. Hmm. Now, the only time that these awards have been presented was in 2014 when Larry K4JZQ ran the table. And I don't know if you can, but if he can do it, you can do it. And uh, so check your logs, heat up your rigs, and do this. And this just, is what you get. Just for fun. And afterwards, you can go see Larry brought several pounds of certificates <laughs> with him. We may change the format this year just because we've been doing it this way for five years. And now some really special awards. <laughs> the Get to Know Your Club Award. For new members, for con contacting the following club members, one Mike. One John, one Bill, one Jim, because we've got lots of those in the club. And special endorsement for Dayton. We don't have a lot of Daytons. Or a Dave, or a YL, XYL. The Eyeball Award to AARC members for visiting physically the shacks of five club members and submit some documentation. This is a serious one, the Elbering Award which recognizes help and assistance and support being given to you by another member of the club. And uh, we, we pay a lot of attention to that. So if there's somebody who's helped you out, send us a little note about that person and we will give him or her a, uh, a certificate. And interested AARC members, are please join the very informal awards group. I won't even call it a committee. Uh, we don't have physical meetings. We do everything by email. And we like people with good senses of humor. And it's kind of fun. And send me an email if you're interested in joining. And I said before, any mode, any mode, <laughs> even this. Thank you for your attention. Please. Any awards for ticks? Uh, you know, I think it, George, I think it was you who, when I was invited to, well, I'm, a, I'm a retired infectious disease doc. When I was invited to give the tick talk the second time, I believe it was you sitting over there who yelled out, What? Again? <laughs> so, it's been a while. I miss it. We've got a, <laughs> listen. We've got a new tick in Virginia, Haemophysalis yes. longicornis. We'll have a test on that later. <laughs> Every Larry absolutely ran the table. Now, the eyeball one is relatively new. That was the eyeball one was is a relatively new one, and it was suggested by El Presidente here. And the reason I came up with that one, I'm amazed at the number of hams that know each other well in this club. We eat lunch together, we socialize at meetings, but never visited the other person's shack. 